G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, there is tons of bullish news out there right now, even though Bitcoin has pulled back a little bit. It nearly got to 50,000, dropped down to 44,000. Now it's sitting around, uh, sorry, 44,000. And now it's sitting around 45,000. So have we seen the bottom or do we pull back a little bit more or do we just continue to rise higher? It's really hard to know in the short term, but in the long term, I am still massively bullish on crypto in general, but particularly Bitcoin as well. And it's because of the mass adoption that is coming. And we'll go into some stories about that very, very shortly. But we can see we dropped down below that 1.4 trillion. So now we're $1.394 trillion. So look, still a long way from where we were. We were under a trillion like only sort of two weeks ago. And now we're nearly 1.5 trillion, not far off. And I'm sure we're going to get there very, very quickly. BTC dominance has dropped again. ETH dominance, it has dropped as well a little bit, and that just means that the altcoins are actually doing quite well as opposed to just, you know, sort of looking between Bitcoin and Ethereum. So altcoins are still going completely and utterly crazy. Gas fees have come down a little bit, which is good, but they are still way too high. And we're going to look into a story about that as well. But let's have a look. It looks like there's basically a sort of a sea of green there. So things are doing well, but obviously Bitcoin and Ethereum have pulled back a little bit. The two major caps sort of at a point now where they're just leveling off. And so the altcoins really are just going mental at the moment. All right, let's have a look. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? All right, quantum, there you go, 60% status, AMP. I mean, these are just absolutely crazy gains at the moment. And I mean, look, Avalanche, that's pumped 300%. And look, it's really hard to know. This can be a little bit scary and daunting. We may see a fairly significant pullback at some stage. But in saying that, I'm really not sure if we're going to either. I just think there's too much momentum at the moment. There definitely will be a point where we're going to see a severe correction. And I'm sure it will sort of come before we get to the peak of the cycle. But then again, things are different this time. But in saying that, they're also the same. I mean, look, the graph doing unbelievably well. Kyber Network finally starting to move. Hopefully it's with that good news of Kyber 3.0 coming out. Cardano is just on an absolute tear at the moment. You know, almost a dollar. It's getting back close to its old all-time high. And the thing is, once it hits its old all-time high, then it will really just go into price discovery and no one really knows where it's going to go. I've heard people talk about $8 for Cardano, maybe $10. I mean, that would be unbelievable. If you got in at the low point, I think Cardano was going for about $0.02. Cents. You could pick up $0.02 cents when it was at its lowest point after the last bear market. So imagine you got in at $0.02 cents and you're now sitting on it at $0.90. Cents. You know, you're getting close to a 50x right there. That is quite good. All right. Yeah, I mean, just look green, green, and double digit greens. Uh, unbelievable at the moment. Now, we again, I don't want to spread FUD, but just be careful. We could see a reasonable size correction at some stage. But again, we're going to get into the news. There's lots of bullish news that makes me think we probably won't see any large corrections just yet it's probably going to take a little while but in saying that if bitcoin really starts to get on a run you will see these olds bleed off a little bit profit will be taken out of these alts and it'll be put into bitcoin all right what about losers any big losers not really elrond again you know pumped nearly 200 percent. so if it's losing 11 percent, only the people who bought right at the top are going to complain terra luna same thing down 10 percent there's only a couple of double digit losses and they are really low double digit losses, but then you just gotta go next door to them and have a look how much they've actually pumped. One inch, not sure what's going on there. I'm gonna say the previous seven days have probably pumped quite a lot. Filecoin, again, if you're losing 10% after you know basically a 70, 80% pump, I don't think anyone's too upset by that. So really low single digit losses, not so bad. Now let's go over to the Bitcoin chart and we can have a look. So we did kind of top out there and it's pulled back and we're waiting to see. I mean, this is still four o'clock in the afternoon. Or I think this is a 23 hour clock, so it's probably four o'clock in the morning. So we've still got a ways to go to kind of see what is going to happen with Bitcoin. But again, really, if we sort of come back down and, you know, retest, you know, sort of $40,000, $42,000, you know, around about sort of here, that is not bearish. That, again, is just quite bullish because this is, 
quite a bullish move. And if it comes back and sort of retests its last old all time high, which is again is around about 42 if you count the wick or 40,000. So if we were to come down, consolidate here, and then make another move up, that is what bullish markets do. Like a set of steps goes up, comes down a little bit, goes up, comes down a little bit. And then we go and it just keeps doing that. Now, obviously, this is a correction that was needed. Things were just too hot in the market. And yeah, I am quite bullish uh, on cryptocurrencies in general, but we're gonna get onto some amazing news about Bitcoin, and this really is big. So we've already looked at Tesla buying cryptocurrencies, and now there's talk about who are the next big companies. Will Apple do it and things like that? Well, after Tesla, Twitter considers adding Bitcoin to its balance sheet, says company's CFO. Now, this is what it says. Twitter chief financial officer Ned Segal said that the giant social media platform is looking into potentially putting Bitcoin into its balance sheet. Additionally, the executive said that Twitter is exploring options to accommodate employees and vendors if they request to be paid in the first ever cryptocurrency. This is just a nice way of saying we are doing it. We just haven't got it signed off just yet. This is what all the companies do at the moment. They either deny it outright or they're saying we're looking into it and then not long later you find out that they have done it. Exactly like sort of Tesla, you know, there was not really much word about it and then all of a sudden it was there and then, you know, it's not just Tesla, it's a num number of other companies. So I would say in the very near future, it's not going to take long, a couple of weeks at most, Twitter is going to come out and say, yes, we have invested some of their money in their balance sheet into Bitcoin. And it's just going to continue to happen, continue to continue to continue happening. And here is why. All right, Grayscale. So the CEO of the world's largest digital asset manager, Grayscale, says that the demand from institutions has only accelerated in 2021. He also said that the narrative for large corporations to jump into the big, on the Bitcoin bandwagon has shifted from why to why not. I completely agree. I, I could feel that coming from such a long time ago. You just needed someone to do it first. And look, Grayscale's been buying for a while. So they, you know, they've been around for a long time. But really, it was Michael Saylor coming out and buying Bitcoin, being so public about it and it performing so well that that has just started. And then, you know, T Tesla has come out and done the same thing. And it's just that the wave, this is where it starts. The old saying, nobody wants to be the first, but nobody wants to be the last. And really, once you see somebody do it and it's successful, you're like, all right, I'm definitely thinking about this. And particularly once you see a second person do it or a second company do it, and then they end up being successful, that's when the floodgates just open and everyone is going to come. They really will. No one's going to want to be the last in the end. And unfortunately, the person who is the last is probably the one that's going to get burnt. And look, anyone who's towards that kind of back end, but as long as they've done their research and they understand that it is most likely going to go up again, it's part of a cycle, all you've got to do is hold. Yeah, it might take you four years before you're back to even, but then after that, you're going to be most likely, again, this is never financial advice I provide, but you're most likely going to be well in profit. I know that's the way it has been for me. I bought in right at the, almost right at the peak in 2017. I uh, watched it drop drastically. I never sold it, I held on to it, and now I'm well in profit again, like well in profit. So that's my personal opinion, not financial advice, but that's how it's worked for me. So Grayscale, they're just getting more and more institutional money coming in. Now we can go over here. This is massive as well. So Visa's getting into cryptocurrencies. Now MasterCard has also followed suit. So MasterCard will allow its almost 1 billion users to spend cryptocurrencies at more than 30 million merchants, although it hasn't specified which coins will be supported. I'm fairly confident it's gonna follow suit with the ones like PayPal. So it'll be Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, and you know maybe another, a couple of others. Could be Bitcoin Cash or, or something else. We'll have to wait and see. But the institutional adoption is here. This wave is going to be huge. Wait until retail get on board. We have some retail here and it's starting to grow, but retail are gonna be, again, the people who've never touched crypto before and never really trusted it, once they go, oh, MasterCard's got crypto, 
maybe this stuff is legit. Or PayPal as well. What, Visa? Is everyone now in crypto? And that is going to be that light bulb moment for them. And then they are going to pile in. Unfortunately, they will be really late to the party. But for everyone who's in now, you and me who've been in for a while and still anyone getting in now, you are early to the party. Very, very early. The institutions are only just getting here. If the institutions are only just getting here, the true retail, i.e. the rest of the world, they're still coming. They haven't got here yet. And again, particularly those hardcore, you know, they've probably heard about crypto and heard it was just a scam and it was this and it was that and it's going to zero. It will be that moment when they see all these big companies suddenly offering it and their banks, their banks will get on board. It is coming. They will have no choice but to get on board. If they don't, they will simply disappear. And that's what I mean. All of a sudden, you know, people who, again, were right against crypto, their bank's going to be saying, hey, we've got this Bitcoin thing. Do you want to get involved in? They're going to be, what? Isn't that all dodgy and, you know, crap? And then their bank's going to say, no, no, this is legit. This is real. That's why we got involved in it. They won't tell them that they bagged the crap out of it many, many years ago and not even that long ago. You can only go back maybe 12, 18 months ago and they were bagging the absolute crap out of it. And now they're going to be selling it to everyone because they will have got in nice and early before the real retail get here. And that is what is really going to boost it when the rest of the world finally gets put onto cryptocurrencies and they're being put onto it by, again, what they would consider reputable businesses again their banks their governments will start to invest into it they will again everyone will they will have no choice this is the start of the new financial revolution it is happening and it's the information's out there you, you can think it's not going to happen and again india's looking at trying to you know ban crypto and all the rest of it they won't have a choice but to get on board when the rest of the world is already doing it and again Big companies like MasterCard, they're used in India. Visa, used in India. PayPal, used in India. They will have no choice. They will, I'm not saying they won't have some stringent rules around it, but they are going to bend the knee. They will have no choice. If the rest of the world is doing crypto, they will be doing crypto. All right, last but not least, and a bit of a the downside of all this amazing news of just how well cryptocurrency is doing at the moment Here's the downside. All right, so Bitcoin and Ethereum fees are through the roof again, and they most certainly are. And we've been talking about Ethereum fees being really bad, but now it's Bitcoin fees as well. And this is where we need, for, for the true big adoption, is we need Lightning Network to come out, and we need Layer 2 solutions for Ethereum. So Bitcoin investors may, ha may be having a field day due to the cryptocurrency soaring price, but those wanting to spend the coin won't be too pleased. And this is going to be part of the problem with MasterCard and all that. Um, transaction fees are climbing high and fast. The cost of moving Bitcoin is now the highest it's been in three years. It's $25 on average, according to the latest BitInfo charts data. Fees have climbed quickly this week after Elon Musk's Tesla announced it had bought the currency. Since the news, they have soared 122% in three days. They are $11.45 on Sunday, and now they're $25. So, while crypto is the future, it still has hurdles that it has to get over, and obviously fees are the number one. They need to get it down to where there's almost no fees, and it's instant. So the issue with Bitcoin at the moment is Bitcoin's not even instant. It slows down. Number one, you're gonna pay $25 for it to happen and it's gonna take a while to happen. The Lightning Network, from some of the things I've seen, is super fast and super cheap. There's almost zero cost in transferring that Bitcoin. But it's not widely adopted yet and so that is one of the problems. But then we can scroll down here. The same problem currently goes for Ethereum, the second biggest cryptocurrency by market cap. The average price of sending the currency was $24.24 at the time of writing, fast approaching the highest it's ever been at $25. At the start of the year, the cost of sending Ethereum was only $9. And unfortunately, it is going to get worse as more and more people get into it. We can only hope that Matic, which is now Polygon, and Ethereum 2.0 and other Layer 2 solutions start to really get adopted quite fast. 
the fees are the biggest issue at the moment. Again, it's not so much the adoption. The adoption is happening anyway, but that will definitely slow down the bigger adoption. And I do think places like MasterCard and PayPal and that are sort of aware of that, and that's why they're not going too full on and just letting everyone in the world have access to crypto at the moment because it's just not ready. The fees are too much, and that will put people off. And that's what makes me think maybe the... The, the worldwide retail adoption might not come this this cycle. That might be the next cycle because I'm, I'm not sure if the fees will be fixed you know, in the next few months to a year. It might take a little bit longer than that. So the institutions are getting in. They can handle these kind of fees. Uh, it's not going to bother them too much. But the wider worldwide retail adoption, we can't take fees like that unless you're a, you know, a millionaire, billionaire, you know, and so on, trillionaire even, you just can't afford to pay $24. Imagine you're only trying to send $3 worth of Bitcoin or $3 worth of Ethereum and it's costing you $25 to do it. You're just not going to do it. You're kind of stuck. So that kind of uh, worldwide adoption, I don't think we're there yet and I'm not sure we're going to get there in this cycle. We need those scaling solutions to come out for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. But I'm still super bullish on this news. All right, my question to you today is, do you think it is basically signed, sealed and delivered that Twitter is going to come out and say that they have invested in Bitcoin and that they're also opening it up to uh, vendors and employees and things like that? I think it's basically already done. This is We've seen this before. They come out and say they're looking into it and then... You know, it generally doesn't take long. A week or a couple of weeks later, all of a sudden they say, yes, we have invested it. They don't want to say they have because they may still be in the process of it and that just throws the price sky high. So they don't want to say anything like that until it's signed, sealed and delivered. And that way they get the Bitcoin at the best price. So yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think Twitter are going to do this or basically are in the process of doing it right now? I definitely think they are. All right, if you could do me a favor, go down below, click on that like button. It helps my videos get out there. I really want more people to see my videos. Uh, build my channel. That is the, the aim of the game for me. If you can click on the subscribe button and then the bell icon, and that just gives you updates of when I put out new material. And I put out new material every day. All right, I won't take up any more of your time. Things are exciting. I want to get back out there, do some more research for videos tomorrow and things like that. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on those game trains. They're definitely out there. And I'll see you next time.